Up next on Eco Company. Don't confuse this stuff with dirt. We bring scrapped foods not used back out to the farm, decompose them, they go back in the ground and make your food more nutritious. It's compost and we're climbing to the top of the heap. Wouldn't you like some of this? It's farmed at the table fresh and these guys are doing it all. And feel like a little color? These buds fit the bill. Then, get with the program. You can learn so much about the environment in just so little time. It's time to start something like this at your school. Eco Company starts now. Are you ready to join the Green Revolution? Well, you've come to the right place. That's right, you're watching Eco Company, where it's cool to be green. First up, Jessica's putting on her rubber boots to take us on a little field trip. So what's this I'm standing on? It's a huge mountain of compost, and you won't believe where it came from. And we're here to check it out. Welcome to Jepson Organics in Northern California, a place that's making compost for farms and they're doing it by recycling loads of this stuff. Look closely and you'll see this isn't garbage. It's full of food. We collect 400 tons of food scraps every day in San Francisco. Most of it comes from restaurants and coffee shops. Robert Reed works for Jepson and NorCal Waste Systems. He's been part of this unique program from the get-go. What can people compost? All their food scraps all the broccoli and the cantaloupe skins and even spoiled lunch meat and steak bones through a, a modern urban curbside composting program. We want all of your food scraps, all the kitchen trimmings from the preparation of meals, all the plate scrapings because people leave a little french fries or something on their plate. We want the coffee grounds, we want the chicken bones. There's carbon and nutrients and organic matter in all those food scraps. We want to bring them all here and we'll turn them into beautiful compost. Why is compost so great? It protects the environment two ways. It's organic matter that helps the soil without chemicals. But what you might not know is that the organisms in compost actually trap carbon, keeping it out of the atmosphere. We're literally managing carbon we are sequestering carbon deep into the soil. It's the only way to do it. It's a great spot of positive environmental news in a world of a lot of environmental challenges. So now that we know why composting is good for the planet, let's find out how these guys make it. It starts here, in restaurants like this one. They save all their food scraps from the kitchen and off our plates. After they're tossed into the compost bin, it all gets hauled here where the magic happens. What you're seeing is 24 tons of food scraps ready to be composted. First, scraps are sorted and then sent through an industrial size grinder. Anything that's snuck in, like plastic bags, gets the boot. Paper and cardboard are okay. After it's sorted, the material is covered up with black tarps. That's when it begins to decompose. After that, it's placed into these windrows where it gets turned by this machine. We decompose it naturally with microbes that are normally found in the soil and in the environment. And those microbes build compost. We really just manage the microbes by keeping the organic matter in a nice pile, by watering it and turning it, this giving the microbes a good environment in which to build compost. Soon, it's ready to go out to farms where growers need it to feed the soil. Our ultimate goal in making compost is to both uh, recycle materials and also have an end product for the farmer that helps their crops to be more nutritious for us. Compost expert Bob Schaefer helps get the recipe right. So this is what the farmers use to grow crops and the food that we eat? Yes, and this is a very excellent compost to use for growing food because this compost is loaded with the minerals that came from food because we recycle food from restaurants and waste and it goes back to the compost, it decomposes, and let those minerals come back to the crop again. So this is a very nutritious type of compost for raising food crops. It's the future that concerns these guys the most. 
if we would all simply take our organic matter from our kitchens and simply compost it in a very simple system, which you can find access to easily in most cities and towns. There are little compost programs where you can find out how to compost, and it would be most effective and beneficial for the earth and for our own health if we'd compost just a little bit, or if you can't compost yourself, take it to your neighbor or to someone in the area that can compost that material instead of it going into the dump. The young people in this country have a great opportunity and it's to teach adults about, about the importance of environmental programs like composting. Let's teach those old dogs some new tricks. It'll be better for our, our whole environment. Okay, so now we know how great compost is for the soil, but how does the food taste? We're checking in on one group of students who are giving it a taste test. It's farm to the table fresh for these high school students. We just need to make it into smaller pieces so we can throw it in. They're teens taking part in a program called Food What? Before they can eat it, they've got to roll up their sleeves. People always ask us, are we growing future farmers? And I say, not really, we're growing strong individuals. And I think agriculture presents a really nice opportunity to learn a lot of these skills in a very empowering way. Grab a bunch and cut it above the ground. Daron Camarchero is the program's director. This is an organic farm. Everything we do, we use organic principles and practices. Here, teens from Natural Bridges High School, like Larry Ariza Jr., are getting the scoop on how to farm sustainably many for the first time. I just took this opportunity at first just to see what was out here, something to do on a Friday, but now I've, I found out there's a whole different way of farming besides just using like pesticides, there's like all organic and all that stuff. All that stuff includes not using chemicals, composting, and of course, getting some dirt under the nails. <laughs> Today we planted popcorn and squash and pumpkin. So what we need to do, and we can all do it, is grab a bowl and you can just um, pop them off of the kernels. Senior Kieran Cahuano is on board with the organic approach. We don't use um, pesticides at all, so that creates less toxins in the air and is sustainable. What goes into your soil is what's going to go into your body. So if you get nutrient-rich soil that's organic and doesn't have any toxins or pesticides at all, then you're going to eat it and then it's going to help your body. If you start eating those chemicals, then soon enough, you know, you're going to have a couple problems. And it's not good for the earth. we got enough bad uh, stuff in the earth already as it is with our cars, so by making the farming, it just makes it ten times as worse. A lot of native peoples use this inner crop. Why? So after these guys get a lesson in how to plant, the harvest begins. When you're harvesting this spinach, go for nice big leaves and just pluck them off. Just like that. It'll be quicker than using the cut. We harvest some peas, some spinach, some lettuce, and they're gonna grow back as quickly as we pick them pretty much. That you can guess his favorite has to be the peas, They're the sweetest. It's really exciting to see them get engaged and especially some of our youth that wouldn't necessarily shop at a fancy health food store or anything are taking this produce, making a connection with it, bringing it home to their friends or their families, talking about changing habits. I'm really looking into sustainable agriculture and all the benefits that it does for the world. Now it's back to the kitchen where the controlled chaos begins. In this case, farm fresh veggie tacos guaranteed to satisfy. Probably the best part of every day. We do great work, we'll bust out a whole you know, few rows, transplanting, whatever, weeding. But it's usually when we eat the meal. It's usually when we sit down and we break bread together. That's where a lot of the pieces sink in. Maybe it's like the stomach activism. But it's when they start saying, oh yeah, we grew that spinach. And now we're cooking that spinach. And this tastes good. And I could do this at home. That's one of the most exciting parts, I think, is when they start to make all those connections and they take a lot of ownership over it.
It's a lesson in farming that goes far beyond what ends up on the plate. I'm definitely having fun and I think it's something that um, everyone should kind of be a part of or have more knowledge about. And it's really a uh, change for yourself is a change for the world. It's kind of amazing to see how you can just change the world by a little bit. Up next, we're heading out to meet the bug guy who's giving us a greener flower. So it's bugs fighting bugs? That is right, that is uh, good bugs fighting bad bugs, and it's an interesting, uh, fun thing to do. And later, a high school greens up its campus. Every single month we have what we call beautification, where we work on the dank grove and also all the adopted gardens. More Eco Company is next. Love flowers. We buy them for special events and for our moms. But these, these are all special, and we're here to show you why. Want a little color? We found some. It's everywhere you look inside this greenhouse. Our mission is to grow great quality flowers and put a lot of smiles on people's faces when uh, when they uh, enjoy our flowers. Fresh cut flowers are a big business in the U.S. Americans spend $20 billion on them a year. But unlike these, some can be sprayed with toxic chemicals. By using chemicals, I think it's not a good practice. It's just not good for environment. It's not good for our people that, that work with our flowers. And it's not good for the people that buy our flowers. Here at b &H Flowers in Watsonville, California, they're doing things differently. We use uh, sustainable growing methods, so what, what that says is we're trying to take care of the environment. Hans Brandt runs the family business, one that's produced the world's first organic Gerber daisies at its sister nursery. So there's absolutely no chemicals in that whole greenhouse, in the water, in the, in the treatment, it's, it's all organic material. They're doing something else too. So what we try to do is mostly use beneficial insects or natural products to control the pests. And that's where Alberto Arroyo comes in. Good bugs to kill bad bugs. That's the system we use. Arroyo is the bug guy around here, and it's a job he loves. Oh, it's a lot of fun. I like it. It's really interesting. They're using beneficial bugs to get rid of unwanted guests. Beneficial insect, it, it's a good bug that by nature, they attack uh, pests. And again, pests are bad bugs that hurt our crops. So it's bugs fighting bugs? That is right, that is uh, good bugs fighting bad bugs and uh, it's an interesting, uh, fun thing to do. First, they use sticky traps to figure out what bugs are in the house. It's got special glue on the sticky trap and as you can see, here we have a bunch of uh, white fly and as most of you know, white fly, it's, it's a really, really bad uh, pest. Uh, we also have a leaf miner, that's also a bad, uh, bad insect. I'm gonna flip it over, see right here. This is a good bug. This is a beneficial insect, this one right here. So it's a really uh, important piece of uh, equipment to identify what's going on in our greenhouses, whether it's good or bad. Then you hunt them down. So what's with all the colored flags out here? Each flag represents a pest, not a good bug, but a bad bug. Green means that we have an infestation of aphids on this area right here. Blue means we have a spider mite infestation. We have a white flag, and white flag uh, means white flag. Workers keep an eye out for the culprits. But they put little flags out for us to see there is a pest that we need to control immediately before it's a huge problem. The point of all this is to keep harmful chemicals away from workers and our noses. That's why I like using beneficial insects because that's, that's a safe uh, practice for, for everybody, for our flowers, our customers and our employees. Personally, I think this is absolutely wonderful. I think uh, uh, right now it's new. I think you come five or ten years down the road, it's going to be very normal, it's going to be done everywhere and in all crops. This is absolutely the future, 
uh, and, and it's, it's good for the earth. It's time for recycling duty. Up next, how one school is getting it right. So these are our recycling containers. And we go around after school and we take all of this recycling and we put it in these big blue toters, which are collected, I think, monthly. They take all these for us and they give us 20% of the profits. If you want to know how you could green up the planet, your school is a great place to start. Every little bit counts, and here's a high school that's showing us how it's done. Meet members of the green team at Branham High School in San Jose, California. These guys are a part of SPARE, a group dedicated to greening up their campus. SPARE, it's an uh, acronym for Students Promoting Awareness of Recycling in the Environment. Recycling isn't all they do. They also help clubs build gardens. Plus, they've planted a native grove where everyone can come to chill out. Oh yes, all the kids like it. I mean, it's a really nice place to sit out during lunch or at break and just, you know, breathe some nice fresh air. <laughs> I think it's really great that we're so involved with the environment because it's really important. Global warming is eminent and important issue. SPARE members keep on top of all the projects that make their campus more eco-friendly. We actually have 60 to 70 members and every single month we have what we call beautification where we work on the Dent Grove and also all the adopted gardens. Club members Liana Wynn and Kyle Shimabakoro are two of the ringleaders. So these are our recycling containers. Um, kids at lunchtime and throughout the day at school, they put um, beverages, beverage containers, you know, cans. And then we go around after school and we take all of this recycling and we put it in these big blue toters, which are collected, I think, monthly. Bear is in charge of the paper recycling as well. There are boxes around classrooms where um, teachers and students recycle paper. And then our club comes around and picks up the paper and recycles it in the back of the school. Plastic, aluminum cans, and all that paper get hauled back here. The company we recycle with gives us 20% of the profits, and so we use the proceeds of the recycling to fund all uh, projects on campus. As you can see, they're putting that money to good use. The Grove originally was a wasteland before we got there. A few years ago, about two or three years ago, we began um, building mounds around and we started planting native species onto each of these mounds. Now this spot is home to drought resistant plants native to the area. That means they only need a little water now and then. Our environment, you know, is depleting. We don't have enough native species, which means that we don't have enough um, native habitats for our pollinators to, you know, come around and pollinate and do their thing. And so it's really important, not only just for the environmental reasons, but also for the economic reasons that go behind it. I'm humbled to say the least that they would put as much time into this as they do. History teacher and spare moderator Matt Zayner oversees the club. We just wanted to prove essentially that a little bit of activism can create a sense of community awareness and a place where everybody could hang out and that was our goal and I guess we've proven that. Even the benches are made out of recycled materials and see those birdhouses? He'll never guess what's in there. And there they are! They've created a nesting area for the endangered western bluebird. We have five birds in there right now. We have five eggs that just hatched, and so it's totally cool that our school, out of all the schools, has endangered species on their campus. Like, how many schools get to say that? The school tracks the birds for the Audubon Society. You can learn so much about the environment in just so little time, and joining this club has you know, made me a lot more aware of our environment. So whether it's picking up a shovel, digging in the dirt, or reaching into the recycling bin, 
These guys say the future of the planet is up to us. We're such a society that's so involved in materialism and, you know, consuming that, you know, we sometimes forget, you know, the environment that we live in. You know, we only have one, so it's very important that we take care of it. I think young people should do more because it'll be a problem if nobody does anything and, you know, we're the stewards of this planet, so it's our responsibility to take care of it. Did you know an average family of four wastes 400 gallons of water every day? So cutting back not only conserves a natural resource, it also saves the energy it takes to purify it and pump it into our homes. So here are a few things we can all do. Turn off the tap while brushing your teeth or shaving and take shorter showers. Every minute your faucet is on is three to five gallons of water down the drain. When doing your laundry, and you all do your own, right? Wait till you've got a full load. Washing just a few items wastes water and electricity. And this is something you should never do. Washing your car in your driveway can waste 150 gallons. A professional car wash can use 50 to 80% less water. No matter what you do, be eco-wise and be a part of the solution. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Check out our website at eco-company.tv for more on the show. We'll see you next time. After all the global warming, you know, our environment, we really need to be careful in what we do. So recycle, try your best, and it's, it's easy to just throw things wherever you want, but if you take that extra minute to just find a recycling bin, it really helps. So.